Welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, in today's coaching video, I wanted to take a look at a quote that I really like from Eckhart Tolle. He is a brilliant spiritual teacher. And in a recent comment to one of you, I mentioned that you should pick up the power of now and have a read. You know, sometimes when we're looking at things astrologically, we really get caught up in timelines. We really get caught up in mapping the abstract world, but we forget about this very important thing called the now, which is where all our power truly lies. Okay, it's really important that we identify more with the now than with the timeline. So I'm going to read out this quote. I've got it on my screen now and I'm going to put it in the description below so that you've got it. And then I'm going to draw a map showing how I visually see this, what he's talking about. And I've had some comments from some of you over the months saying that you really like things being mapped out, things being drawn out. And I think when we're interested in astrological information, you know, we're abstract thinkers and we like being up in the sky and we like frameworks and tools and things that we can use to map, to map energy, I guess we could say. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with that, to map energy. So what's the quote? Let's take a look at this quote and I'm going to draw a visual representation that maps this out so that we can think about this quote in visual terms because I know that some of you are visual thinkers so let's have a look at this quote. He says, forget about your life situation and pay attention to your life. Your life situation exists in time. Your life is now. Your life situation is mind stuff. Okay, so what are we dealing with? Life situation, how can we look at this visually. So I'm going to draw out this thing here, which I'm going to call, well, I guess I'm going to call it the now. How about we call it the now? Okay, so we can see that. That's the now. Um, the other, I've got a couple of other ways of phrasing this, and I'm going to call this a plate. Now this is for very visual people, right? You might want to visualize a plate. You might want to visualize a stage. So a plate is in a plate of food, that kind of thing. You know, when people say there's a lot on your plate, right? a stage, stage. Actors come on your stage and then they go away, right? You could think of it in that way. Um, you can also think of it as in terms of a space, right? You could call it the now. Okay, so I know I've got a lot of different words going on here for this, but bear with me. Okay, so this is always available to you, and it always is, and it's really who you are. You want to be identified with this as opposed to what's going on here, which I'm going to call life situation. Okay, life situation is going to happen here. So... How about we draw some life situations? And I'm just going to pull them out of my head at random. I have not done any notes. I'm just, this is, I'm brainstorming. We're brainstorming together right now. So uh, let's have a think. They've all vanished from my head. I thought of them this morning and they've all gone away. All right, let's say, let's pick a nice easy one. Life situation. You fall in love. Oh, isn't that wonderful? And then heartbreak, right? Terrible. You're devastated. You're upset. Um, what else? Let's say you're working really hard and you write a book and then you become famous. Another life situation. Um, you've been healthy all your life and you feel fantastic, but then, oh no, you're diagnosed with a fatal illness, right? What other life situations are we going to have? Um... You're very studious all your life, and then 
And then I don't know, gradually, incrementally, you kind of, you figure out a few things about life and, and you end up feeling really good. <laughs> what else could happen? Um, oh gosh, I don't know. You're in a job that you hate, but then all of a sudden, I don't know, all of a sudden you, you're in a job that you hate and then what happens? You have a spiritual awakening, far out, let's do that. And then you live in bliss for the rest of your life. How about that? Okay. Um, this is kind of the Eckhart Tolle thing, you know, you're, you're homeless on a park bench. You have an, yeah, you, you become enlightened and then your life is up here and you're hanging out with Oprah. There we go. That's a good life situation. That's a great one. The point is, I think you can see what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to show these visual flows of time, things that happen. You know, um, you win, you win ten pounds in the lottery, yay! Um, you stub your toe, boo! You know, like all these things that go on in life, in time. So you can either be identified with those movements. And you can be identified with what's going on up here. Um, and that's great when you're falling in love. Look at that. Whoosh, you're up here. You're having a ball, you know. So you, we like to be identified when it's something wonderful. But then, you know, think about the person who got diagnosed with the fatal illness, right? You, you don't want to be identified with this. So regardless of what's happening here, what you want to do is you always want to be identified with the space in which it happens, the plate, you know, we say you've got a lot on your plate in life right now, um, the stage, right? Think of, you could think of the now as a stage and different actors come on and different actors leave. I definitely like to think of it as a space, um, you know, but that's where we want to be identified. We want to be identified with the now, which I think is Eckhart's phrasing of that is absolutely brilliant. Um, that's a quick way. But if you know, you've been watching far too many Eckhart videos and you need to shake it up a bit in your mind to remind you, um, you could think of it as a plate. You could think of it as a stage. You could think of it as a space. Um, let's have a look at this astrologically. Can we look at this astrologically? Yes, we can. These time sequences, we can look at them in terms of Mahadashas. Okay, so I've just begun. Hang on, I'm going to get rid of that. I have just begun my. Oh, hang on, that's a bit messy. Go on, why don't we fix it? I can fix it. Here we go. Just draw that back on. Okay. I have just begun my Saturn Mahadasha. So what does that look like? Well, I've probably done about that much. Right? I've done about a year of it. Not long. But what's it going to look like in 20 years' time? It's going to look something like this. This is what I think a Saturn Mahadasha looks like. And I think if I put in the work... It'll be like walking up stairs. Okay, so that's a 20 year period of time. I have to put in the work though. That's a big thing with Saturn. I can't not do the work. What was Jupiter Mahadasha like? What did that feel like? Um, so I've been through it. Those of you who know your Mahadasha sequence in your head, you will know that I've been through it. And what did that feel like? Well, I'm going to say it kind of felt kind of like this. <laughs> It felt, yeah, pretty much like that. I think that's my Jupiter Mahadasha. What did I have before that? I think I had uh, Rahu, wasn't it? I think it was Rahu. What did that feel like? I think that kind of felt like... That felt, that was not too bad. That was sort of like that, maybe. That was my Rahu Mahadasha. And I do remember my Mars Mahadasha. And I think it was something like this. I'm going to go for that <laughs> that was my Mars Mahadasha <laughs> not everyone's going to have one like that 
Some people might. Mine was like that, a little bit like that. It's a bit dramatic, but fascinating and very good and a very good time. But these are time sequences that have happened, that have played out in my life. And, you know, ultimately the smart thing to do is to always keep coming back to this, to keep being here. And the beauty of if you keep being here in the now, why is it so good? What's so wonderful about it? If you live a meditative lifestyle, you then witness all the little things with such clarity. So let's take a day for, for an example. Um, let's say you're with someone, you're having a nice day, and then, oh, you have a fight with someone. But then you watch a beautiful sunrise, <laughs> right? And the more you are embedded in here, you are sort of, um, and the more spacious you are inside, the more you can appreciate the beauty of what that is, right? This fight is now potentially inspiration for a piece of art because you can see it. You're not identified with it. It can provide ingredients for something you create. And also, you know, wisdom, like you, um, you'll be better equipped. The more spacious you are, you will see with accurate precision every little detail and nuance of what's going on in your life situation. You'll be better equipped to steer it as well. So, you know, n nothing is a problem in here. And this is not easy, right? Uh, mapping this out is not easy, you know. And, uh, people have tough lives. Yet, if you keep being identified with, with the now, you will be able to handle whatever plays out in here. No matter how big or small or what, there's always somewhere you can go. There's always a safe place where you can go and where you can live. You can live from here. And then that enables you to see, you know, what, what goes on up here. So I think we're running out of time, 14 minutes. I hope this has been helpful in terms of mapping out what is a life situation when Eckhart talks about it, because he talks about it a lot. So those of you who are fans of his work, I hope you enjoy my visual depiction of the principles that he's trying to teach. Um, thank you so much for subscribing and I look forward to seeing you next time.